So now, here we have a voltage doubler circuit. Uh, there's a number of parts we're gonna make separate shorts on each of them, but uh, any case, we have a couple LEDs here. There are two green LEDs in series. They need about six volts to uh, really light up at all. We have five volts at the supply. A little bit trickles uh, in, you know, at uh, this low voltage even. And we don't even have five volts across them, but uh, any case, there we go. I press the button. Now you can see we get, you know, a fair amount of time where they're, they're kind of bright. They're gonna fade down though. So for this particular setup, I would have to keep hitting the button, um, you know, constantly to uh, keep them lit up right there. You wouldn't use a push button like this in a practical circuit. You could use the output of like a 555 timer or something, you know, uh, far more effective, but this helps illustrate. I'm giving a pulse of a uh, higher voltage right there so that the LEDs can light up in this case. So now, we begin uh, looking at the circuit. We have a dial there, and then a dial there before the capacitor. We have five volts at the supply in this particular setup, and uh, so it's gonna charge to, you know, like four volts or something. And then uh, we have, parallel to the capacitor, our load right there, which needs about six volts before the LEDs will conduct. So again, this is a voltage doubler where um, each pulse uh, basically tries to double the voltage and we'll do a good job if the pulses are fast enough but yeah there you can see we start off with these uh, two diodes again they're limiting uh, voltage but uh, we got the other uh, capacitor right there so it can charge so it's called a charge pump it charges when you connect the ground then you can put a positive supply uh, behind it right there that'll put the two power supplies in series and uh, they'll force current into that capacitor, its voltage will rise. But again, the load is gonna take uh, current away, so the voltage is gonna quickly go down as well. So now this is the charge pump capacitor. We charge it, and then we put it in series with the power supply so that it pumps that extra voltage somewhere else to uh, simplify this. So you can see we got the dial there, the cathode is right there, by the way. Um, so it can charge that way if the uh, negative side of the capacitor is connected to ground. So we got a couple of transistors here. It's either uh, connected to ground through that transistor or it's connected to the positive supply through that uh, transistor. So we're focused on uh, charging this right now. Uh, and most of the time it's connected to ground. So this capacitor is charged. Now, when we switch this so that it connects to the positive supply, we got the charged capacitor there. We got positive here. So that puts them in series. Their uh, voltages add up. And uh, it goes in this direction because this capacitor is headed to ground. Remember, we got positive over there. So its voltage goes up. But then again, it also has to power the load. So now, we're gonna look at the schematic when it comes to the uh, charge pump capacitor right there. We just looked at the actual circuit. So, in case, 1000 microfarad capacitor. Exact value doesn't really matter, but you'll uh, store more charge if you use a larger value um, but you also have short circuit uh, issues so you don't want to go too large but in case we have this path here and when that transistor is on the capacitor will charge right there now when you turn this uh, transistor on only one of these can be on at the same time um, so when you turn this one off and turn this one on and you have a charged capacitor right there you are gonna have a current path going this way the capacitor is charged now without this uh, diode it would just go right back to itself. Um, so the capacitor would just discharge. So we have the diode to stop that from happening. Instead, we have this diode that now lets uh, current flow into that capacitor, but not back uh, that way. So its voltage is gonna rise, and also it's gonna be able to power this load. So now we're gonna look at uh, the transistors of the actual circuit right here. That's a uh, voltage doubler. Here's the uh, charge pump uh, capacitor for that. So we have the end channel enhancement mode uh, MOSFET uh, right here. So both gates are tied together. When you get a high input, that turns this one on. It connects to ground uh, pretty much directly right there and allows the capacitor to charge uh, through it because the other side of the capacitor is to the uh, positive supply and do other circuitry. Now, once it's charged, then we need to turn on the P channel enhancement mode uh, MOSFET. So again, you give a low input to do that and that also turns that one off. Then it connects directly to the positive supply. So there's other circuitry on the other side of the charge pump capacitor headed to ground. So when you give it a positive over here, that uh, makes their voltages add up to push current. Now, of course, as the capacitor pushes current, its voltage is gonna go down. So you have to keep repeating the cycle. 
So now we come to the schematic to look at that transistor setup there. So P channel enhancement mode MOSFET, I have the BS250. And then N channel enhancement mode MOSFET, I have the 2N7000. So you just give the gates a voltage. They don't really rely on current, although they're kind of like capacitors. Current briefly moves, but practically none. So in any case, you give a voltage to, uh, in this case, both gates at the same time because I have them connected together. So um, it's like a not gate. So if you have a high enough uh, voltage right there, that turns the N channel on. And, um, you know, it's N channel more negative. They're opposites, way to think of that. And then uh, turns the P channel off right there because it wants a more negative uh, signal to turn on. But in any case, that connects to ground. In this case, that charges the uh, capacitor. Then when you give a low output, again, that's going to turn on uh, this transistor. It's going to connect basically directly to the positive supply. And their voltages are going to add up and push current into that capacitor. So now, something has to give us the changing voltage to our transistors right there. So this is what I got set up just for demonstration purposes for the most part. Unless you did want to manually control this. But in any case, we have a pull-up resistor. So what it does, it keeps a high voltage, 5 volts in this case, to both transistors right there which keeps the end channel transistor on so that most of the time um, you'll probably have that capacitor charging and uh, with the push button switch I'd have to hold it uh, down to give the opposite now we can't go directly to the positive supply we can as far as the transistors are concerned but now we have a switch that is connected to the uh, negative supply when I close it so as long as I close it then we turn on the P channel enhancement mode MOSFET and channel turns on we got a direct uh, connection to the uh, negative supply and um, so this capacitor is going to you know, discharge at some point, so voltage will go down. But each time I press it, we'll see a pulse of more uh, current going through the load, but ultimately it's actually charging the capacitor really quickly. So now we'll come to the schematic part of this switch. Um, so it's probably a little easier to understand for some people. We have the positive supply coming through that resistor basically to the gates because no current is flowing. So we'll get five volts to the gate. And then remember when it comes to these uh, MOSFET transistors, the enhancement mode uh, when the gates positive the channels are made more negative which turns on the end channel but turns off the P channel but in any case there you can see we have that path to charge the capacitor right there now to give a low input with our demonstration here again there's integrated circuits that would be much better at this um, oscillators but in any case you close the switch there you can see I have a direct connection to ground that's what we need this resistor for so current can flow that way um, but again we can put a direct uh, voltage to the gates so zero volts right there turns off n channel turns on p channel for the same reason and that pumps uh, current into this capacitor and through the load right there so now this circuit would be called a voltage doubler because you get almost twice the voltage but not quite so first off you got uh, these two diodes so when it comes to charging this capacitor it has to go through that diode when the transistors are connected to ground right there so already it's not going to get all the way up to five volts you know probably a little bit more than four then you go to the positive supply then you're going to have five volts come into that side of the capacitor in relationship to ground over there and uh, so their voltages are going to add up again it's uh you know maybe like 9.5 total to begin with but then it's got to go through that diode so maybe you'll get this capacitor up to like nine volts if uh, you're lucky now we also have a load there uh, you know taking away current um but if you go rapid enough maybe you'll get this up to about nine volts so you're not going to get the full 10 volts but it's close to double instead of working with five volts as far as the load's concerned you got like nine close to double and for those that like to be explained uh, things through schematics, we have this. So there you can see, we're not going to get the full 5 volts charging that capacitor or this capacitor when it is headed to ground. So even though this is called a voltage doubler, we do have some voltage losses. Maybe that'll get to like 9.5 volts, and uh, if you're lucky. Now, when we uh, turn off that transistor, turn that one on, then uh, we got, you know, a 5 volt difference that we added to this capacitor in some ways. Um, but it's already like four and a half volts maybe. So we got like nine and a half volts. But it's got to go through that diode, which is going to drop at least 0.5 volts right there. So we got about nine. And then as the capacitor uh, discharges, it's going to go down as well. Um, so if we're really lucky, we can pump about nine volts into that capacitor. Again, current's also being drawn uh, through the load right there. But if we got rid of the load, our maximum voltage would probably be about nine volts out of ten. So not double the voltage, but close. 